Hi, everybody. Uh, hit it, Stevie. 1978 was a big year. 17, then 18. We lived in Las Vegas, where my father was stationed. Graduated high school, and most important, my brother and I became Eagle Scouts. It's a huge honor. Only 2% of the Scouts become Eagle Scouts. We made it just under the wire. The stereotype of an Eagle Scout is a straight arrow fit me. Three years prior, we lived in England. We were both the English and the American Boy Scouts. We had the unfulfilled ambition of being the only Eagle slash Queen Scout twins ever. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Uh, few folks know that I lettered in high school. Yep, I'm a jock. <laughs> my, my varsity letter came from Varsity Quiz Game Show. The, the donut guy is on the left. <laughs> Almost busted out my letter jacket today. <laughs> I cannot believe I lost to those guys. <laughs> Add chess club, model you in and debate. Peak nerd. <laughs> Didn't skip a single class. I was shy, awkward, and terrified of sex. All great qualifications for owning a sex store. <laughs> Someone told me I just look at Jeffrey Dahmer. It, 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 in 1973, our Texas troop went to the Jamboree in Coeur d'Alene. We camped in Yellowstone and Deer Lodge. Fell in love with Montana. We also got to see the original Colonel Sanders from like 8,000 feet. He was wearing white. <laughs> I got to Bozeman via romance. My sister Pam followed her boyfriend to MSU. I arrived with a duffel bag at the Greyhound station in the Bozeman Hotel. I walked up to miss you. It was crisp fall, and the leaves were freshly fallen. It felt like home. Fast forward three years. Oh, by the way, that's my brother. He had a better picture. <laughs> uh, fast forward three years. Took classes at MSU. It never felt right. I didn't drop out. I never dropped in. <laughs> Still wanted to change the world. Had to do some public service. It's expected of an Eagle Scout. I wanted a big change. Here we go. <laughs> Serendipity led me to Miss Kitty's. Around 1983, my friend Creed knew the manager, Alex. She needed a part-time person, so why did I do it? It was rebellious, it was nonconformist, and it was that big change. My eyes were about to open wide. <laughs> it, it, was, it was fascinating. In retrospect, that was one messed up place. <laughs> Innocence. <laughs> I always wanted to give back to scouting, volunteer. Working at Miss Kizzy prevented that. So I volunteered for the Bozeman Help Center. The Help Center, it made me. For 25 years, I was the Wednesday overnight guy, 87 to 2012. That's the old Help Center on South Church. It's gone now. I learned how to communicate there. I worked with the best people I'll ever know. Wendy Vischer and all the great counselors. So what did I learn on those 3M calls? You can talk about everything. Rape, depression, horrific things. People have unbelievable problems. And inspiringly, there's a network of wonderful people who selflessly help. After that, sex, that's easy, so to speak. In the late 80s, we had the AIDS crisis. Sex could kill you, and did. Miss Kitty's promoted sex. It had an obligation to promote safe sex. Volunteered for the Southern Montana AIDS Coalition. It felt like a new moral center. It also had the unfortunate acronym, SMAC. Uh, I had to change that. Met a new hero, Lauren Match. I just saw her today. I'm like, by the way, I thank you. <laughs> She's like, really? <laughs> it's great. She's a sex educator at MSU Prof. We worked on HIV prevention. Laura invited me to lecture at a human sexuality classes. Turns out, college kids like to have sex. <laughs> you think that you're too big, too tall or too short, your penis is too small or too big, your breasts are too big or little, you like a different flavor of sex, you have a scar or a pooch or a birthmark, you obsess. Nobody wants to have sex with you. That's completely wrong. People want to have sex with you exactly how you are. In 2007, 2007, I was laid off Miss Kitty's and had opportunity to start Erotique. It's the only to use my new 
skills in a new way. Here's a few stories. A local fraternity sends a dozen rush pledges down to ask, how can I get laid? <laughs> well, what are your core values? Trust, honesty, and good communication. Use those values when it comes to sex. And by the way, college-aged women tell me you suck at sex. <laughs> and you have an opportunity to fix that. Last Friday, a nice woman, woman came in. She said, you, woke, you spoke to my class, talked about a woman who's never had an orgasm. That's me. She was so brave. We chatted about her agency and resources and how it's fixable. I felt hopeful when she left. Catapalooza, so fun, gave away 500 bullet vibrators. Can you hear it? <laughs> uh, a, a few folks complained. The nice woman at Catapalooza says, I can't yell out free bullet vibrators. <laughs> Orgasm equality. What do we want? Women. Now. What do you want? Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Those words apply to healthy sexuality. 40 years. Wow, who'd have thought? Full circle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>